He's very serious there. How are you? Me? Yes, I'm looking right at you. I'm doing well. What's your name? Sammy. Sammy? Pleased to meet you, Sammy. Nice to meet you. Now we are connected, right there. All right. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Can you hear me now? Yes, clear? Everybody's clear? Yes. Is my mic on? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so, I was asked to come back, which is always a good thing, because if you give a talk somewhere and they invite you back, that's, that's like, yes, woot woot. You're happy because they invite you back. And I thought about it well, while, while I was driving up here. I said, why? I mean, what, what did I say or do that made them want to have me back? I mean, you college students, how many freshmen here? Yeah, hands higher, please. How many so uh, sophomores? Whoa. Any juniors? Seniors? You're going into the real world soon. One more year, and then kaboom. You ready? Not yet. All right, so you guys got, you got a few more years, right? So you can, you can chill a little bit. But I thought about why they asked me back, and I thought, well, hmm. I mean, I went to college. Yeah, I, I, I got a degree. Then I went to work and I got a more experience and I went to college again, I got my master's. And then I came back to work and I went through work for many years. But that wasn't why they asked me back. And I said, well, let me think about it a little bit more. And then I thought, once upon a time. Once upon a time is a story, right? We start stories by once upon a time. So I said, once upon a time, Bapa Chowdhury, that's me, was a college student, freshman, like you, sophomore, senior, junior. And then I went into the world of working, and I went, oh, I'm going to be an engineer. I was an electrical engineer. So I went, wow, engineer. And then after a few years, I thought, I don't want to be an engineer. I didn't like engineering. I mean, I liked it, but it wasn't, it wasn't my passion. My passion was in selling sales. So I thought, okay. So I did my marketing background and then I went into sales. And I was 33 when I went into sales and people thought, whoa, what's wrong with you, dude? I mean, most people go into sales when they're younger and then they come back into management. You went the other way. And I thought about it and I went, oh. So I'm doing things a little differently, right? The pathway. And then, I, after many years in corporate life, I quit. I literally quit corporate life. I said, bah, bye bye. And I became a professional motivational speaker at age 55. 55, that's when you have a cane normally, <laughs> or a wheelchair, or something like that. And you become a motivational speaker? What up? What is wrong with you? And I said, well, that's what I love to do. I love to talk to people and motivate them. And, and I, I looked at the, today and it said, the signs when I, when I was driving around were, be more inspired. I thought, hey, that's what got into me. I was inspired to do something different. My point being, when you start college, you start on one track, right? You say, I want to be an X or I want to be a Y. But that doesn't mean you have to be that all your life. Make sense? So if you're sure about what you want to do, God bless you. Because you are one of the few people in this room who are sure. If you're not sure about your life, chill out. At 55, you can still decide. So if you're 19 or 18, 17, don't worry about it. Have fun. And I think that's my main point is that Today, I woke up thinking, I'm going to have fun today. I want to have fun. So my talk today, my story today, is my life. And hopefully, it'll inspire you. OK? Hopefully, it'll inspire you to be something that you are inside you that is there. So that's why I wrote, success in college, career, and beyond. Dimitri, right? I mean, you never know what's beyond. I didn't know whether I was going to be an engineer all my life or a marketing person or a salesperson or a, if you asked me 30 years ago, are you going to be a motivational speaker? I'll say, what was that? 
What did I do? I didn't know. So put your seat belts on, relax, chill out a little bit, and follow me in my story, OK? So first of all, today, the three objectives I have. Number one, be happy. If, you, if nothing else, when you leave here today, say, I met this guy who's old man. He has fun in life. He made me have fun. Number one, single most important object. Number two, I'm going to share some knowledge and some wisdom. Anybody know what the difference between knowledge and wisdom is? Any feeling for it? What's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Somebody, put your hand up. Yes, oh my god, brave man. Knowledge. What's your name, please? Nick. Nick, tell, tell me, what do you think is the difference? Nick, that's pretty good. I think it's very good, actually, because I think knowledge is something we gain from reading, learning, re reading more, listening to people. We gain knowledge. And most of you will have, at the end of your four years here, a hell of a lot of knowledge. A lot of books in here. A lot of lectures, a lot of PowerPoints, a lot of Excel spreadsheets in there. Most of you will not have a lot of wisdom. That's not bad. It's not bad. Wisdom comes from experience. So you can be 15 and have a lot of wisdom because you were very experienced in something that you did for all your life or for, for, for a few years. Make sense, everybody? So today I'm going to share with you some knowledge and some wisdom, and you'll enjoy it. And lastly, change something in your life if needed. If needed, and you'll see what I mean, okay? So let's start. Thank you, Dimitri, professor. Thank you, sir, for inviting me back. Thank you for listening to me, for coming today. Because a great, great speaker is pretty useless if he speaks to himself. If there's no audience, I mean, you're like, whoa, man, great audience. Yeah, they love me. There's nobody in the room. So the fact that you're here, I'm happy. Number three, this is the guy who brought me here. You probably meet him sometime in your career. He's a professor here, he's been here for many years, right? Many years. And he met me at a Westchester, Pennsylvania networking meeting for the count board of somebody. I met him and I, he liked me, I liked him. He said, why don't you come to Elizabethtown one day and give a talk? I said, where's Elizabethtown? He goes, don't worry about it, you find it on GPS. <laughs> I had never heard about you guys. Never heard about where's Elizabethtown. In fact, what I love about coming here again, I take 76 west from Philadelphia. I'm on 76, I'm driving like brrr. Suddenly it says take exit 266. I take exit 266. Next thing I know, there's no highways. It's a farmland. People are mowing their lawns with single mowers, handheld mowers. And I'm thinking, this is nice. Do you know that I drove 14 miles from there to here and there was not a car behind me or in front of me? Hello? That is heaven if you live in Philadelphia. Because normally people are driving either in front of you or behind you, texting, on the phone, talking to them all at the same time. And you go by them and you go, dude, what are you doing? They go. <laughs> Coming here was like a breath of fresh air. I chilled. I really chilled, so thank you. Cy Sims was a New Jersey retailer who made clothes. And his quote that he loved was, an educated consumer is the best customer. The more you can educate your consumer, so remember this in business. Write this down. In business, if the number one thing that you do for your product is educate people on it, they will become your best customers. Would you agree with that? Because if they know more about your product or your service, it goes in here. So the fact that th this school of business brings in speakers like me 
to educate you, I think is a great thing you guys are doing. Because it, 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 it melds practical life with, with business studies that you do, put together. Great thing, great thing. Be happy, why be happy? Happiness, hmm. Check that out. Did you know that? Did you know that Harvard studies happiness now? Time Magazine had an entire issue dedicated to happiness. Wow. They are studying happiness together. And I'll tell you why they're doing that. Let me show you why. Look at this, the cost of unhappiness in business. 70% of US workers are disengaged at work. Is that good? What's going on? Why are people disengaged at work? Why do you think? Somebody, give me some feedback. They don't want to be there. Your name first. Jared. Jared? They don't want to be there. Interesting. But they got a job there, right? But they don't want to be there. Why don't they want to be there? What, what do you think some of the reasons are they don't want to be there? Oh, great answer. So I think a lot of times we take a job because we need a job. I need a job, mom. I need a job. Somebody give me a job. And the pressure comes from everybody in your family. Got a job yet? What are you doing? Nothing. What? You got a job yet? You got a job yet? Why do we do that? Why do we say you have a job yet? Why do we say, you chilling out for a year? Yeah. I'm going to the Bahamas. Well, don't go there right now. <laughs> sad, very sad. Why don't, we, we, there's pressure to have a job. Wrong thing. Look at this. Disengaged workers cost the US between 450 to 550 billion dollars. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of money. You can see the other statistics, okay? 80% of people who are dissatisfied with a direct manager are disengaged. If your boss is an idiot, you will not want to work for him. Would you agree with that? How many of you have, have you had jobs before you came to college or, or now where your boss is an idiot? And were you engaged in the job? <laughs> Professor puts his hand up. Yes. I had a, my boss who was a bloody idiot. And I thought, I don't want to work for you. I'd go to work because they'd give me a paycheck. <laughs> a paycheck is good. But the paycheck will not last you happiness. Would you agree with that? So think about that. Number two, check out this. If you're happy, happy employees have 31% high productivity, 37% high sales, 3% high capacity. Would you agree with me if I said the following? When you're happy at your job, you do better? When you're happy in school, would you study better? When you're happy in a relationship, does it grow? If you're going out with a person who you're not happy with, is it going to last long? Well, it might because you're stuck in it, right? And you're scared to change. You fear change. We'll talk about that later. So let's do this very technical, very high tech survey. Now, follow me, please. Follow me, okay? Don't, 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 don't jump ahead. Stay on the right side. Stay on the right side. Are you happy? No. Do you want to be happy? No. Keep doing whatever you're doing. <laughs> if you don't want to be happy and you're happy being unhappy, why change? This is very important to learn. Not everybody who does something is happy doing it but they're satisfied doing it. Make sense? If you're satisfied doing it and you're, and you're good in that state, why mess with you? Don't mess with them, let them be. A lot of workers are unhappy, but they're stable. It doesn't mean you fire every unhappy person. And if you're not doing woot woot every day, it doesn't mean you're, you're, you're a good worker. Make sense? Let's go to the left side. Oh no, stay with yes, do you want to be happy? Change something. 
change something. Let's stop for a second. Let me ask you, what makes you happy? <laughs> what makes you happy? Just name two things that make you happy in life. Yes! I mean, let's, you know, we don't admit it when we leave home to go away. We don't tell mom, I miss you so much. I miss you. No, I'm independent now, dude. I'm like, yeah, man, I'm, I'm, I'm cool. But inside you're going, God, why do I have a shower with 10 people? <laughs> what happened to my bathroom, which I loved? Even though I had a sister and a brother and a dog all using it at the same time, I hated them then, but now they look like angels. Because people don't put the seat up, they shower, you know, whatever. We don't appreciate life until we don't have it. Make sense? So number one is, if you're unhappy, change something, okay? Let's go to the left side. Are you happy? Yes. Keep doing whatever you're doing. Don't change. You're happy. But if you want to get happier, change something. Make sense? Let's go on. So let's meet. <laughs> That's not my name, really. Bapa is my nickname. I was born in India. And in India, when you're, when you're born, typically your grandmother or somebody of that senior age gives you a, a formal name. And my formal name was Biswajit. You're saying, what's that? Biswajit is a big name because in Indian, it means world conqueror. My grandmother had high aspirations for me. She doesn't know I'm in Elizabethtown right now. She thinks I'm taking over the world. I am, if I'm starting right here. So, but my mom said, let me give you a name that some people in the world can pronounce. So she said, Papa. You know, I like Papa now because it's like Madonna or Pele. <laughs> I don't tell anybody, uh, my name is Papa Chowdhury. Hi, I'm Papa. You will remember me because you say, oh, Pele, Beyonce. Do we know what Beyonce's last name is? Who cares? <laughs> He's Beyonce, yeah, I, yeah, that's me. So I like Bapa. Because you don't have to say to him, hi, I'm Bapa. Bapa, 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 Bapa. Okay, then, oh, you can't see my younger brother. I chopped him out of the family. I need the money. But guess which one's me on the top? Top right? Anybody else say uh, otherwise? Wait a minute now. Yes. Hallelujah. Because I think I was meant to be a motivational speaker. Why? Check it out. Look at the next picture. <laughs> Who is smiling in that damn family? <laughs> Only me. So I think somebody said, you know what, Mr. Chowdhury? You can go into engineering. You can do all electrical stuff. You're going to be a motivational speaker one day because you make people happy. I said, OK. Then I went. So we traveled from India. And now I live in Westchester, PA. Yeah, man. Rome, Milan, London, Westchester. <laughs> I'm a hot dude. You live there, right? Yeah. Yes, girl. We are brothers and sisters in the hood now. <laughs> but along the way, along the way, I grew up in some different places. Just a few. Just a few places I grew up. I was two when I moved to Nigeria in West Africa. I was 10 when I moved to Wales in the United Kingdom. I moved to India for boarding school. Went to Africa, Freetown, Sierra Leone for high school. College in Canada at Montreal, McGill University. First job, London, England. Second job, America. I'll talk about that later. Then I moved to Germany for a few years, 
I work for a company called Siemens. Anybody heard of Siemens? Yes, German. Very good company. Very good company. I'll talk about that later. And then, remember that name? Well, guess what happens to your name when you go to different countries? It gets morphed a little bit. It changes a little bit. And my point being, be proud of yourself no matter what they call you. So I'm in America. I'm on the phone in New Jersey with somebody from Dallas, Texas. I'd just been here three months at the time, 1984. I'm on the phone with this guy, and he goes, OK, I'm going to send that package right out to you. What's your name, son? I go, Bapa Chow. He goes, got it, and hung up. I went, you know, nobody gets my name that quickly, especially a Texan. And I thought, OK. So I wait three days, no FedEx package. Fourth day, I called Dallas. I said, any package for Bapa Chow? They go, no. Fifth day, the mailman calls me in New Jersey, and they go, Bapa? We got some package here, and you're the closest thing to it. <laughs> True story. I still have the FedEx slip. It didn't say Bapa Chowdhury. It said, <laughs> <laughs> where do you get B. Claude Hurry <laughs> from Bapa Chowdhury? But I laughed it off. Because if you laugh at yourself, the world smiles with you. If you laugh at somebody else, the world frowns upon you. Remember that. Laugh at yourself, because make it fun. Make life fun. Don't worry about your name. You are who you are. Be proud of it. Doesn't matter what your name is. The family. That's my wife. Her, she's from Italia. She's Italian-American. From Hardysville, PA. Yeah, man. And now we have a few children. Oh my God, that's our pet elephant. <laughs> I'm Indian, I thought I could have an elephant. No, I'm just kidding. I have three children, two going to Temple, one's in high school, in East High School in Westchester, PA, and that's our pet beagle. Toby, I miss Toby already. How many people here miss a, the pet at home? Yes, I mean, you know, you may have kicked that person but when, you were in, when, you were, when you went back home, but now you want them every day in your bed. You miss them. What is it about pets, especially dogs, that is great? Name one thing about dogs which is great. What's your name, Chris? Oh, my name's Matt. Matt, tell me what's great about pets, dogs. Uh, a lot of the times, like, you kind of watch them grow, especially if you get like a puppy or a kitten. So they just kind of like grow up with them. Absolutely. They're like your family, right? What else is great about dogs? They huh? Your name first. Oh, Nick. Nick? They connect with you um, and they spend a lot of time around you. At different levels, right? I mean, I'll talk about my, my ailment later, but I have an ailment, a physical ailment in my life right now. And when I get home, my dog, Toby, comes and licks my hand, which is the weaker side. What? How does he know my right side is my weak side? Something about dogs. But what's the best thing about dogs? They're excited to see you. Oh my God, you're so right. No matter how bad a day they've had, no matter how bad a day you've had, you walk in, they're like, <laughs> food time, <laughs> pee time, play time. I mean, have you ever seen a dog with a bad mood? Cats? Cats can have bad moods. Cats can look at you like, mm-hmm. You home? Where you been? Why are you late? Dogs are like, <laughs> I love dogs. My approach, this is my story. B, 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 breathe, balance, and believe. I'm going to take you on a journey with me, OK? Of why I came up with these three mantras. So it started with the following. I worked at Siemens, and they had to bring your child to school work day. How many of you went to your parents' work day when you were younger? Yeah, right? So that's my son, who's now 17, when he was nine. And he gets to go. My, his sisters went to Siemens with me. Now, he, now he's going to go. So he's in the car, and he's driving with you to work, and he goes, Dad, I have three rules. 
I go, you're nine years old. He said, don't look at me when you're speaking. I go, okay. He goes, don't name mention my name and don't embarrass me. I go, I got it. Three rules, I'm gonna be good. So I gave a speech to about 500 kids at 8.30 in the morning. You try to be motivating kids at 8.30 in the morning. How many of you went to school like this? 8.30, more people don't even wake up yet. I gave a talk from 8.30 to 9, I finish up, I, they go around Siemens the whole day, at 3 o'clock HR calls me and they go, Mr. Chowdhury, we'd like to see you again. I went, HR calls you twice in the day, not good. I went down there and the kids were chanting my name, Bakpa, Bakpa, Bakpa. <laughs> and they wanted my autograph. That's what happened that day. My life changed on that day. I went from being a sales manager, marketing manager, corporate executive to being a speaker. And, and, and there was a lady in the audience, and a lady right there, the mom right there, she said, her name is Diane Gaetano. She came up to me afterwards and she said, Mr. Chowdhury, you have a gift. Let's work on it together. And she helped me create BBB. So you never know where life will take you. You never know where you'll meet somebody who will help you. She had taken notes from a half an hour talk, eight pages of notes. I didn't even talk that much. But she saw stories. You never know what is inside you, okay? You never know what's here. Somebody else might find it for you. Breathe, why do I say breathe? Read this, just take a second time to read this. Is that deep? That's pretty deep, guys. When you speak, you say something you already know. You don't learn. When you listen, you learn. So my first topic for today, my most important topic in, in your life going forward, be a better listener. And write these three, three words down. Write them down on your notes. Tell me more. Tell me more. If somebody comes up to you and they go, like I went to my dad when I was younger. Dad, you have some money? No. <laughs> dad, I haven't even told you what it's for. No. Money? No. My dad was very strict. But if he had said, tell me more, <laughs> I would say, Dad, I'm going to donate to the Mother Teresa Fund the children, home, homeless fund, and I'm gonna buy a new car. He might have given me the money based on the first two, and may not have even heard the last one. Tell me more is a great way to make people speak to you. Make sense? So if somebody comes to you and they said, let's take a good example of this. Let's take a good example of why listening is important. Think of a 911 operator. How many people here have had an emergency in their life where they've called 911? Can you share with us just, don't, don't, don't need to share the details, but what, were, what, were, what was your state of mind when you made that call? <laughs> Terrified. Terrified, right? When a person calls 911, they're not calling for fun, right? There's a serious situation. What's your number of words coming out of your mouth per second, per minute rate? High or low? High. <laughs> There's an accident. What does the 911 operator do? Who says slow down? Well, they say it louder. They slow down. They go, ma'am, are you hurt? Sir, are you okay? Sir, are you okay? Sir, can you see the person who's hurt? Is that what, what they do? In fact, they are trained to ask the same question three times from three different angles. You know that? They are trained to ask the same question three times from three different angles because they need to calm you down. So if one of your friends, like you said, making new friends, if one of your friends comes to you and they're stressed out, 
breathe. Slow down. Slow them down. Tell me more. What's going on? What did I just do to my, my voice? What did I just do, sir? Calm down. I calmed down, right? Did you calm down too? Yeah. What's this? <laughs> so what is the worst thing to tell somebody who's panicking? Don't panic! Yeah, that, like that's going to work. No, you don't do that. So breathe. First lesson of learning is breathe, okay? Do you think she's listening? I don't think so. Number two, let go of anger. Read this too. This is a great one too. This is from the Buddha who said, holding on to anger is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to die. How many people here have been angry at somebody in their lives sometime? How many people have held on to it for a long time? Why? Who's suffering? You or that other person? Whose stomach is it eating up? Yours. Because you're worried about it. You're angry at that person. You're like, <laughs> oh, I'm gonna kill them. Meanwhile, they're like, yeah, oh, cool. Don't hold on to anger. Let it go. So write this down, please. Do me a favor. After you leave class today, when you go home today, call somebody, email somebody, Facebook them, Twitter, Instagram, whatever. Somebody that you have a grudge against that you need to let it go. Try it out. Try it out. And at the end, I'm going to give you my email. If you want to share it with me, share it with me. You don't have to tell me the details. Just say, Mr. Chowdhury, I felt a lot better. Or, what the hell were you thinking? <laughs> that person cursed me out again. Mm. I don't think they'll do that, but try it, okay? I have this great story. That's my pastor at my church I go to in Westchester. He tells this great story about this. He's, he's 10 years old. He's in Philadelphia. He's working up in Philadelphia. And He's on a slide with his best buddy. Two other boys, brothers, are on the slide in front of them. The two brothers go down the slide. His best buddy's up, up now in the third, right? He pushes his best buddy down. Best buddy goes crashing into the two boys. Knocks them over, fish fight breaks out. Buttons fly, bleeding. They all run home. The two boys run home this way, the, the brothers, he, he runs home. He's 10 years old. He's scared to death his mom's going to beat him up or scold him. He gets home. He's all shoveled, you know, disheveled up. The phone rings. He thinks it's the mother of the two twins calling my mom to give me all kinds of grief. Mom answers the phone. He goes, yeah, it's the twins. They want to know if you want to play again. They want to know if you want to play again. All his worries were gone because the twins were like, dude, come on, it's only a slide. Make sense? Let it go. Let anger go. Don't hold on to anger. Is that cool? If you don't know who that is, you know who that is? That's Bapa Chowdhury. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> you look at the other person. You know somebody famous, Bapa. Forget about Bapa. I met the Dalai Lama. Yeah. I shook hands with the Dalai Lama, the head of the Buddhist faith. But I learned a lesson that day that changed my life. What's wrong with that picture? Somebody, sir, what do you think is wrong with that picture? Thank you. Your name is? Zach. Zach. What's wrong with the picture is my eyes are on the camera person. Saying, dude, you got the picture? 
get the picture of me. Where are his eyes? On me. You think that's a humbling day? You know what happened? I turned her back around and I saw him looking at me right in my eyes. The Dalai Lama, who has millions of followers, is looking at me. And he said, be happy. And walked away. Yes, that's how I felt. Say it loud. She said, wow. I was humbled, humiliated. Humble was the word. My ego was in the way. I wasn't in the moment of that moment. When you breathe, you will be in the moment. Make sense? Take time to breathe throughout your life. In first year, second year, third year, fourth year, 20th year of college. Wherever you work, breathe. Be humble. Take the time to be in the present. The Dalai Lama taught me a lesson that day. Check this out. If you can't see it, it says, if A through Z equals 1 through 26, OK? So A is 1, Z is 26, the value. If you spell the words knowledge, you add the knowledge up, you get 96%. To add up hard work, you get 98%. Both are important, but fall just short of 100. Look what word, look what word makes 100%. Is that cool? Your attitude will tell a lot about everything. If you're positive about life, if you're positive, how many people want to pick, go to a pick up basketball game and you pick up the person with the worst attitude? Do you? No. Would you rather have a person who's got maybe 70% or 80% of the talent and a good attitude versus a guy who has 90% attitude, 90% of the talent but bad attitude? Which one would you pick? Good attitude. Did you say that? Yeah. When I walked in today, who did I shake hands with? Uh, where are you? There. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me get it right. Will Patterson. Yes, sir. Will came up to me. He goes, Papa, Will Patterson. I was like, yeah. I like this guy. He grabbed my hand, shook my hand with strong hands, and said, I'm Will. I'm Patterson. I went, wow. Impressed right away. Polite, interested in me. We connected, right? Yes, sir. Remember that all your life. Attitude is everything. If you have a negative attitude, you won't get the job. Do you know that most interviews are over in seven seconds? Do you know that most interviews are over in the first seven seconds? Why? What do people do in the first seven seconds? You're actually you walking in the door. People are judging you the minute you walk in the door. Would you agree with that? If you didn't agree with it, try it. Next time I walk into a job interview, like, yeah, I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. Are we done? You gonna get that job? No way. Now, it doesn't mean you have to be uber happy, okay? Don't do cartwheels going into the room. But just be, just be positive, be, be positive attitude. Balance, why is balance important? So I'm in Westchester East High School a few years ago, giving a talk to juniors and, and seniors. And there's a few hundred kids in the room, big hall, and I asked this question, I said, why is it important to balance in life? And I thought, okay, I'm gonna get this deep Zen Buddhist philosophical answer. Somebody's gonna stand up and give me a great answer, why is it important to balance in life? Guess how many hands went up? Zero. Let me ask the question here. Why is it important to balance in life? What would you answer? Ma'am in gray right there. Rough. Yeah. <laughs> Why is balance important in, in life, in college or? Because um, it can offset pretty much everything, your attitude, your hard work. Yeah, it can offset everything. If you're, if you're not balanced, 
So guess what happened in that class? I waited, I waited, nobody put their hand up. Finally, this one kid in the back of the room goes, I ran to the back of the room, I said, yes! Tell me, young man, why is it important to balance? And he goes, so that you don't fall. <laughs> I went, my God, that is beyond wisdom. Think about it. Isn't he right? Isn't, isn't, quintessentially, he's right. If, you bal if you're unbalanced, you can fall. Now, whether it's literally falling on your face or figuratively, you fall, right? You fail a class. You don't eat well. Your diet. You're struggling with anxiety. You're not balanced. Your confidence is low. How many people here would do any chance to speak in public? Put your hands up. Does that surprise you? I, I'm not surprised. That you, but how many of you other ones are scared of speaking in public? Put your hand up. Be, be honest. Why are you scared? Why are you worried about me speaking in public? You're not confident, right? right? Do you know that the number one reason given by girls going into high school for fear, the number one reason for girls statistically in America is lunch, who they'll sit with. The number one fear of boys in going into grade nine in high school in America, statistically, is public speaking. You know what we fear? We fear being judged. What will they think about me? Will they think I'm not good? Don't fear. I was scared of public speaking. Yes, me. I was petrified. I go, oh my God. Oh. 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 When, I was, when I was young, I used to come out of the... <laughs> <laughs> My name is ba 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 So there I go. My name is Bapa. What happened? I lost my fear. My confidence grew. People don't care whether I'm bumbling or not. If I'm confident, they'll listen to me. Would you agree with that? When we listen to people, we typically look at confidence. So I want you to remember that today, from, from now going forward. Mr. Chowdhury said, don't worry about, don't be fearful of yours, of speaking in public. Get, let it out there. That's what I call balance. You said it nicely. Never get so busy making a living that you forget to make a life. Pretty heavy. Remember that? picture? Let me show you them just a few years ago. Time flies like that. How many here have a sibling back home? How many of you miss your sibling right now? How many of you told them that when you were leaving home? Some of you went like, get away from me. <laughs> but now we're like, like the pet. I miss my younger sister, oh my God. Well, guess what? Your younger sister, your younger brother would love to hear from you. Call him today. Call him, Facebook him, Twitter, and say, yo, what up? <laughs> Just checking in on you, everything good? All good? Do you think they'll make the day? I think it will. Try it. That's me and my wife on the Amalfi Coast in Italia. It's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful. Now listen, I, it doesn't mean you have to go to Italy to be happy. You can go to Elizabeth Town's lake. Stand by the lake, take a selfie and go, I'm happy. <laughs> Mr. Chowdhury said, Amalfi Coast? This is the Amalfi Coast of Elizabeth Town. <laughs> Just be happy, okay? I love taking my girls 
to Shake Shack. When we go to Shake Shack, we have one rule. No diet talk. Just eat the burger and slobber it up. How many people like Shake Shack? Yeah, I like Shake Shack. Guess what else I like? I like Wawa. How many people miss Wawa right now? Do you have a Wawa in Elizabeth Town? Oh my God! That's it, I'm leaving. No Wawa? That is a sad day in, 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 in heaven of Elizabeth Town. I'm going to write to Wawa and say, Wawa, we need one in Elizabeth Town. I love Wawa. I don't know why I love Wawa, but I love Wawa. I love to go there and select my sandwich. Don't look at me. Don't look at me. Do you know that there is science in business to Wawa? Now, let's, you're in the business class, right? This is a business class. Think about business now. Wawa has eradicated which competition? Hallelujah, brother. 7-Eleven has been practically wiped off the face of the East Coast map by Wawa. Do you know why? What did Wawa do that is brilliant? Think about it for a second. What has Wawa done that is brilliant? I, I, I'll tell you, but I want you to think about it a little bit. Food with gas, right? How many times have you gone to the gas to fill up your tank and go, you know what, I'm hungry right now, man, dude. I need that cheesesteak. I need that candy right now. I, I have a candy crush. I need to have candy right now. What else have they done great? What else have they done great? Something called I and NT. IT. Do you know that those machines that tell you what you order are connected to a database, mainframe, cloud-based, that talks about how many slices of ham is being used per hour in every store? They know exactly how many slices of salami, ham, cheese are being used by the hour. Have you ever gone to Wawa and they go, sorry, we don't have any salami left? Anybody? The answer is no. Business talks about IT, OK? Make sense, everybody? You can have great customers by doing good, great business. Do you know that the Wawa stalls are a certain distance from each other? For a reason. What's the reason? What did I just do when I was plugging him in? What did I do? Remember what I did? I said, don't look at me. People have a privacy range. There's a space place called my space versus your space. Don't get in my space. People order your sandwich. They don't want you to know what they're ordering. Code 17, 14, 38. Sandwich. It's a damn sandwich. But you don't want people to know what you're ordering. Make sense, everybody? Wow. wow. My son, when he was younger, with the pro basketball player who played, who went to Duke and then went to the Philadelphia 76ers. Do you think that experience beats playing NBA 2000K on, on, the, on, the, on the GameStop? Would you, would you feel that, that, that's better? Yeah. So don't, get off your GameStop, and your, your Wii or your whatever, and go see a real game. This was me at a one-year-old birthday party. I went to the party, and I see this paint, face painted, and I go, yeah, <laughs> I want to get my face painted. I push the kid around, I kick the kid away. I said, paint my face. I said, she said, what do you want? I want, I said, liar. She painted me a butterfly. I said, why do you paint me a butterfly? She goes, that's your soul speaking. I went, ho, 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 ho. What a great answer to a BS question. <laughs> it's my soul speaking. My point being, now look at the next picture. Look at the next picture. Look at where the kids are looking still. <laughs> My point being, balance your life and have fun, OK? Have fun. Don't be stuck up. Don't be scared to smile and laugh. Don't be scared to talk in public. Don't be scared. Just let it all out. Let it all out. 
that's your brain on, on iPhones. Don't think of a, an Apple like that. Think of that, and then think of that. How many people go on a, have you gone on a date and see people texting while on a date? Yeah. Hello? Put the phone away when you go to dinner. Put the phone away. It can wait. It can wait. Talk to people in, in live, people. Check this out. Why is this a great picture? Yes. Your name, please? Uh, my name is Katie. Katie? And uh, she's the only one that's not just looking at it through their stuff. She's living in the moment. Oh, beautiful answer. That's exactly right. Look at the guy next to her on her left. He's still trying to figure out where the button is for the, suit, the camera. He missed the moment, right? Don't miss the moment. Balance your life, okay? Next, believe. Everybody know that? Everybody know that? What is that, sir? Yeah. Oh, What's your name? Um, Caden. Caden? Yeah. What is, what, what, what's that movie? It's from the Karate Kid. Karate Kid. What's going on in that picture? So tell us, tell us, explain that to us. What, 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 what was he doing? Uh, he was teaching, uh, his name is Dan, was, uh, uh, and he was teaching him a move, but he was disguising it as washing his car. Nice. What was the lesson that Daniel learned and you learned? Um, that not everything that you think is being taught to you, like, it was a pretty assumption. Can we give a round of applause for that answer? <laughs> you know, I haven't heard that good an answer before. You summarized the entire movie in about a minute. <laughs> Didn't he do that? You summarized the entire movie in a minute with a question that you never heard before. Right? My point is, I asked you off the cuff, right? Just say it. Just do it. Now, I built it up, right? I didn't ask you the first question of the day, right? You're about the 50th question of the day. What happens after 50 times? What was his state of mind when I asked him now versus if I'd asked him the first question of the day? Comfortable? Hello? <laughs> Is that your mom calling? No. <laughs> He was comfortable, right? I made him comfortable by asking others first, and then I came to him and I said, tell me more. My lesson learned for you guys is, when you uh, to teach somebody something, take the time to teach them. Make them comfortable. Make sense? Make them comfortable. So I, I'm not even going to say it anymore. You said it so well, I, I'm just going to leave it at that. The point is, l in, in believing yourself, learn first, OK? Learn first. Don't think you can do something without learning. Learn first. Everybody know who that is? Yeah? That's uh, Captain Chelsea Saltberg. He flew Cactus 1549 into the Hudson. Cactus 49. How many people know what that means? I don't know what it means. My brother here knows. <laughs> Tell us more. I, rec I recognize him from the uh, Clint Eastwood movie, Sonic, about the uh, miracle on the Hudson, where he lands a plane into the Hudson River rather than crash landing in New Jersey. Do you remember that story, guys? Plane takes off from LaGuardia Airport. Uh, Professor, how are we doing on time? We're getting about 10, 15 minutes. Right. Plane takes off from, from LaGuardia Airport in New York Birds flying to the engine. Not one, both engines. Gone. He's flying an aircraft, a US Airways jet, with some 100, 100 passengers or so, 155, with no engines. And he has to land. He, he radios ahead to New Jersey, to Trenton. Can I land there? They go, no, yeah, he won't make it. He decides to land it on the River Hudson between New Jersey and New York. Now, if you don't know about physics, 
Let me tell you about something called surface tension in water. Surface tension in water means there's a tension in the water. You may think that you, when you dive into water that you're just diving in and it's free to float. No. There's something on the surface called tension that it makes it like a concrete wall. Concrete wall. So landing a flight on the River Hudson, which is flying at 100 miles, a few hundred miles an hour, on concrete, and he did it. Not one person died. I had the pleasure of meeting him at a seminar a few years later. And I asked him, I went up to him, and we shook his hand, and we took a picture together, and I asked him, I said, Mr. Salenberg, can you tell me in one word what you went through your mind that day when you were flying that aircraft? How did you do it? And he goes, easy, Papa. Discipline. He said, all those years of practice, learning, practice, learning, in aircraft school, in, came to bear in those minutes. He just went into discipline mode. So whatever you're learning right now, okay, whether it's piano, trumpet, swimming, business, learn it well. Train yourself. Make sense? Don't take this business school easily. Don't think this is an easy class. I won't study. You want to be good in business? Study hard. Study hard. Make sense? That's believing in yourself. Remember that picture? The day that changed my life? Guess who I met? Anybody know who he is? Yes, sir. Magic Irwin Johnson. You know who he is? He plays basketball. He used to play basketball. For? Los Angeles Lakers. There you go. Who? You're a Lakers fan. Do you know which school he went to in college? Michigan State. Do you know why I like Magic Johnson? Not because he played basketball. Not because he was a great star at Michigan State. Not because he was a great star at Los Angeles. Those are all nice things. What I liked most about Magic Johnson was that he was the career assist leader in Michigan State. He was the career assist leader in Los Angeles Lakers. For those of you who don't play basketball, somebody who plays basketball, can you please explain what assist leader means? What is an assist in basketball? Anybody? Somebody who, is, who hasn't spoken yet. Yes, sir, your name, please? Justin. Justin, what's assist mean in basketball? To set someone else, to flash someone else up to uh, score. Well said, thank you, sir. You set someone else up to score. You don't score, you help somebody else score. That, to me, is the mark of a great person. Would you agree? You know, I don't want you to be the superstar every day. Help others grow. When you help others grow, your life grows. Would you agree with that? So learn that from today. Learn that lesson about volunteering, helping others. If you see somebody being bullied, go up to the bully and say, stop. Don't wait for somebody big to go up there. You can be small, you can be skinny, you can be heavy, you can be tall. Go up and say, stop it. If they want to slap you, take a slap. Stand up for the person who's being bullied. Don't tolerate it. Would you agree? Help others grow. It'll help you throughout your life. It's made me live happily because I've helped others grow. Many of life's failures are people who did not realize how close they were to success when they gave up. Thomas Edison. Let me tell you the final story for the day. Somebody said, I'm scared, right? I'm scared of doing something. I'm, I'm worried about something. And my point for the, I'd like to end on is don't be scared of failure. When we fear failure, we fear life. When we don't fear failure, we can succeed in anything. Don't fear failure. If you fail, fail fly, failingly. Fail with style. How many people have seen a kid ski and went five years old on a ski slope? Five-year-old ski. What do they do? How do they ski? 
Do they do a big V? Yeah. Then they start, right? Yeah. And what do they soon do after, the, after they, they've gone a few times on the V? They fall, right? Yeah. And do they bounce up? Yeah. yeah. How many people have seen a 40-year-old ski when they fall? What happens? Ouch. Hospital time. Do you know a fact, a fact, that more people get hurt falling in trying to break the fall than in falling itself? Everybody understand what I just said? So I'm falling, right? Instead of just falling freely, they try to break the fall. They typically tear an ACL. My point being, when I skied, I'm not a great skier, but I love seeing little kids ski. They go, boom, and their butt is so close to the, the ground, it bounces on the ground, and it bounces right up. I've never seen a five-year-old who's a good skier go with a, you know, like, slow. No, 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 they just go speed. As soon as you turn 11, you start to fall and fear failure. In kindergarten, how many people put their hands up in, to answer questions? Yeah, most people, right? We put our hands up. We put our hands up. As we get older, we go. <laughs> I'm not putting my hand up. Why? Because we fear failure. We fear being judged. So let me tell you a story. A few years ago, I'm in New York City in a restaurant, okay? And I'm sitting by the, on the window and a big SUV pulls up, an Escalade. Secret Service jump out. A guy comes out with a hood on, walks into the restaurant. I'm with a big group of people, I said, whoo! I met the Dalai Lama, I met Magic Johnson, I'm gonna meet this person, who is that person? I go up to the waitress, I go, who is that person? She goes, can't tell you, private party. <laughs> come on, come on, tell me. Please tell me. She goes, it's Bill Clinton. I go, Clinton? In this restaurant? He had just left the presidency of the United States. He was the president of the United States. I go, I want to meet Bill Clinton. So I got my moxie together. I said, I'm going to meet Bill Clinton today. I got my moxie. I started growing up. I walked to the back of the restaurant. I saw the table where they were sitting, secret service all around him. I started walking up. I'm about to enter the area, a big arm comes out. Big arm, really big arm. <laughs> Can I help you, sir? <laughs> yeah, I like to be Bill Clinton. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right, beat it. Private party. So I go back to the men's room, wash my face, come outside. It felt like I was in there for about an hour. I must have been there for 10 seconds, right? I come outside and I see the Secret Service has changed rotation. What is that in English? A new chance. What's your name, sir? Matt. Matt. Matt's a, <laughs> exactly. It's a new opportunity. The old guy's gone. I'm coming. I came right again. I started walking up. I'm coming. That big arm comes out. Can I help you? This time, Clinton looks up on the table and goes, I went, step aside. <laughs> I walked up to him and said, Hi, Mr. Clinton. Papa Chowdhury from Siemens. He goes, Papa Chowdhury from Siemens? I opened a plant for Siemens in Forest City, Arkansas. Guess which city I landed in when I first came to America? Forest City, Arkansas. We connected right there. I said, Mr. Clinton, I, I was in Forest City for three months. He goes, really? We started talking. Ladies and gentlemen, true story. At the end of the short conversation, he goes, Papa, is there anything I can do to help you? The President of the United States of America is asking me, is there anything he can do to help me? I go, <laughs> All my public speaking skills went out the window. I go, well, yeah, there's a group of us in the back, sir. They won't believe I met you. Could you come and say hi to them? He goes, if I had the time, I'll do it, Papa.
the story that I'm telling you is not that I met Bill Clinton. It doesn't mean, mean anything to me. I met Bill Clinton, I meet you today. You're both important to me. Everybody's important in life that we meet, right? Just because you're president of America doesn't make you, he still puts his pants on one leg at a time. He's a human being. The point is I didn't let him know stop me. I didn't let him know stop me. And I want you to learn that in life. Don't let him know stop you. So when you breathe, balance and believe, right? Listen, balance your life, and believe in yourself. And I thank you for your time today.